a walking tour on board the USS Midway Museum in San Diego, California. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining, and I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see what I can see. So uh, right now I am on the deck of the USS Midway. This aircraft carrier was built in the 40s and is now one of San Diego's biggest attractions with over a million people that visit annually. This is an amazing ship. 4,500 people used to be on this ship and it's right across the bay from North Island, Naval Air Station North Island, where you can see the actual aircraft carriers, the ones that are still in service. This one no longer operated by the Navy, now as a private museum. Admission tickets are about $26 and include access to the flight deck where you can see all of these really neat, very well restored aircraft like this helicopter right here. And this one, the HC-11, what's also neat is that many of these aircraft, you can even go inside you can see right here, this is inside that helicopter that the traveling princess really enjoyed being in. Oh, it's also right next to Seaport Village. So you can see this famous statue right down here of the sailor kissing the nurse in New York City. Seaport Village is down there, Coronado Bay Bridge, Hyatt Manchester Hotel, just off that way. Now, the island, this thing right here, which is kind of the heart of the aircraft carrier, is only open by tour. It's free, it's part of your ticket, but you do have to wait in line and get in a tour. Now, in this video, we're gonna explore some different parts of the carrier in addition to the, the deck up here. Uh, and so if you wanna see more, uh, I've got some time codes in the description if you wanna skip to a specific part of this video. Uh, but I'm starting this, if I said a hangar deck, this is the flight deck. We'll get down to the hangar deck in a moment, which is where they store the planes when they're not on top. And we'll go below deck to check out the city. We're gonna see more of the planes up here, but first I wanna show you what they call Admiral and Captain's Country. This is where the Admiral lived. This is where the Admiral worked. This is where the captains, the Navy 06s on board the ship would stay. And so you come in here and we go below deck now. I should point out if you're coming to visit here and you don't like stairs, this is not the place for you to come because there are a lot of stairs. So definitely bring some easy walking shoes as you'll be doing a lot of walking. They've got cardboard cutouts and statues to make you really feel like you're on board a Navy ship because it's one of the biggest differences about being on here in a real aircraft carrier is there's no sailors on here, no Marines, just tourists. So there's also a free audio guide you can get and they got good signage. This is the lounge area in the Admiral's quarters. And then you can see there's a little bit of a bed right here. You can see, uh, look right there, that was Rear Admiral McCarthy's leather jacket right there. It's pretty well signed through here so you don't get lost. This was the Admiral's wardroom where they would dine. And uh, sorry, this is the Chief of Staff stateroom. So this is the staff where his staff officers would eat and this is where that Chief of Staff would live. And so there's a bunch of dining areas on board this carrier, but there's a special dining area right here just for the Admiral and his staff. So they get the special food cooked from here, separate from the dining areas we're gonna see a little bit later. And as I mentioned, these areas they've set up nicely so you can see right here, it looks like they're doing work. You can see a sailor on duty in that little room. All right, we're gonna go around this way. And you can see they got lots of exhibits. Here's Admiral March talking about uh, Desert Storm, 1991. And then this is probably my favorite room uh, as part of this part of the tour. This is where they would really control the fleet. So aircraft carriers are never by themselves. They're always with a lot of other ships to help protect them. And so this is where the Admiral and their staff would control the fleet. And so clearly they can't go through all those different areas, but that was operations where they'd see where the different positions of ships are and figure out what their plan's gonna be. Uh, sorry, planning is a different room. This is the radio room, and you can hear sounds in here. They sound like radios going on. These are old uh, communication systems from the Navy. This ship's been out of commission for quite a long time, so this is not what current technology looks like, uh, but 
this is what it looked like back in the day. You can see somebody working back there fixing those systems because you can imagine they needed a lot of different fixing. And I do like the ambient sound they put in here. It makes it feel much more like it's actually real. It does get warm in here too, so you might want to not have a big jacket on. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt and <clears throat> it's still a little bit warm in here. You can see all these gears knobs. The Traveling Princess had a lot of fun coming through all these rooms and turning the knobs and pushing buttons. And the great thing is, you know, we can't we can't blow anything up anymore since nothing is live. But the great thing is if you've got kids, they can sort of run around and not get too lost because most of these areas are fairly one way. Just make sure they don't go down any of the random passages that are closed off. All right, this is the Marine Corps orderlies. Um, and so, here we can see one of the bathrooms in the ship. This is uh, the nicest, probably one of the nicest bathrooms. It's got a toilet and a shower. The enlisted ranks showers are a lot smaller. And uh, this is the captain's in port cabin and they've actually got a captain here to talk to you. Reminds me a little bit of Disneyland. Let's listen to Captain Earth here for a moment. 4,500 sailors, chiefs and officers aboard. It's my job to see that they're trained and ready to meet every mission we're called to do. On the USS Midway, the buck stops right here with me. Okay, that's kind of cool, but also a little bit creepy. <laughs> well, you know, what do we got over here? This is another cooking area. You can see the sailor is hard at work there, cooking. And uh, we go this way. We're coming out to the outside, sort of the end of this little area as we listen to some great Navy music. Uh, this is the air transfer office, the terminal for the aircraft carrier and the battle group. All right, and we'll go up this staircase. I mentioned there's a lot of stairs, right? There are a lot of stairs. This is where, coming out of here, is where you would line up if you want to go on the uh, bridge tour, the island tour, to go see what's going on, how they actually like control the aircraft and control the flight deck, because that's a group tour. I'm not going to go on it for this video. But if you are planning to come to the Midway, you should know the hours of this place. It closes at 5 p.m., but last admission is 4 p.m. On weekends, it gets really busy, and so I'd encourage you, if you're going to come here on a weekend, get here in the morning. Get here when they open uh, and spend, plan to spend probably at least three hours here. If you're a real big Navy buff, you might even consider spending uh, the whole day here actually and have lunch. There's a pretty good cafe that we're gonna go take a look at in just a moment. Now, what's also cool is these planes on weekends, uh, you can actually get up in them and take pictures in some of the planes. And we've got one down there that's open today that you can see. These are some neat, that's an F-14 fighter Tomcat we just passed. These are some neat utility helicopters. And they've also got little uh, people in there. I mean, not actual people, but mannequins. So you can see what it would have felt like to actually be in there. Planes have missiles on them. Obviously not real missiles, but prop missiles. On the right is a A7 Corsair. On the left is an F4 Phantom II. Uh, and some of these, they've got little cockpits just up on the side. They've got the names of some of the pilots that operated these. This is the F8 Crusader. There are a lot of volunteers that volunteer here, people who are formerly in the Navy that love to talk about how this actually worked, landing talks. So if you wanna learn more, dive deeper into how it works, join one of the talks, ask any of the people wearing the yellow hats. Those are the volunteers, they'll tell you about things. This is the T2 Buckeye Pilot Trainer. The Traveling Princess really enjoyed taking pictures in there. She really didn't want to leave, in fact. Here's the A1 Sky Raider and the C1 Trader. You can see the wings on these actually fold up to make it easier to put on the uh, the aircraft carrier. And there's no, some more of the folding wing planes back there. And this is a electronic warfare plane. So this one doesn't have any like bombs or things on it uh, because that one is all about electronic attack. So that would be jamming uh, and other things using electronic weapons. Now, if you're looking to park here, the parking lot that's right in front of the Midway is $10 for all day parking, which is really a pretty good deal. 
Uh, and so I'd encourage you to do that. If not, the meters in the area are like three hours. So um, you might have to go out and feed your meter again if you're gonna be here for longer. But the good news is you can get your hand stamped and then uh, just come back in again if you wanted to go out for lunch and then come back. If you're looking for lunch options nearby, there's the fish market seafood restaurant right next door. I really like the fish and the clam chowder there. Carnitas uh, Snack Shack has good carnitas. Also, Miguel's has really good Mexican food. Those are three I would recommend if you're near the area and don't want to uh, eat on the Midway. So now this is the hangar deck. This is one level below the flight deck. And you can see this is the big area where they would store all the planes right below. But before we walk down it that way, I wanna show you the cafe and then the gift shop in case you're considering eating here. And I'll tell you, it's actually a really good cafe. Museums aren't often known for their tasty foods. But out here, they've got uh, like pastries and things like that. All these treats are $4.99. They've got some tarts, berry tarts, apple tarts, donuts. And then here, they've got the actual food food. Uh, today, they've got what looks like tamales right there. Bright light, so it's hard to focus. They got a grill where you can get hamburgers, cheeseburgers right here. The chef's prime rib special. If you're a meatitarian, you can get some prime rib there. And the prices are pretty reasonable as far as museum food goes. And then the best part is there's really cool seating. You can sit right out here in this cafe with the American flags on it, looking out at Harbor Drive. Uh, so that's cool. Now this is the gift shop and a lot of uh, Navy gear that you could pick up here. But what's also cool is there's a lot of Top Gun merchandise in here because they do Top Gun showings here. And in addition to Top Gun showings, actually the premiere of the latest Top Gun movie uh, was gonna be here just a few days after we visited. So a lot of fame, you can pick up a Top Gun sweater, sweatshirt, you can pick up a Top Gun bomber jacket. We considered picking up one of these, but how much is this little one? $109, that's, uh, that's too expensive. Now, they have this neat exhibit here of how the current aircraft carrier, the USS, uh, well, the number 78, compares to the USS Langley, that's the Gerald Ford in the back, much bigger today than before. They blow the whistle every half hour, which make it like, like they used to do where they were calling people we're gonna walk down this hangar deck here in just a moment, but, but first I wanna take you below decks, what they call the city at sea. This is where there's the galley, laundry, sick bay, and engine room. And we're gonna go down this staircase here. We're going one deck below the hangar deck to start this. And this is where you see where they feed the fleet. There are a number of eating areas on board. This is the map where we're gonna to go to the city at sea. And uh, you can see they got sailors here. They've got the metal trays. They've got the chipped beef on special today. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> you can imagine to feed 4,500 sailors three meals a day was impressive. I saw a sign someplace else that said uh, coffee was like the number one thing on board the ship and they would go through over 10,000 cups of coffee per day, which is really quite impressive. And if we go, keep going this way, there's a whole bunch of areas on the ship that are closed off that you can't go to doors that are just closed. Uh, but uh, the ones that are open, like this one, just take a peek inside. This one right here is the ship's chapel. Uh, every uh, aircraft carrier has a number of chaplains that are on it that help people be, help the sailors stay connected to the faith. This is the chaplain's chambers. So this is where the chaplain would sleep. Chaplain has a sink in their room, but not a toilet. And this is the uh, junior chaplain. So main chaplain and the junior chaplains, they have to share a bunk in here. All right, and here's a, what one of the typical ladders look like in here not the staircases, we've got a sailor cleaning down there. And uh, back here, this is the fire station. We'll go this way and check out this 
stateroom right back here. You can see this is a much bigger sleeping area for more high ranking officer. The, uh, I think this was the captain of the ship. And uh, obviously fighting fires was a big deal because if anything happens, they need to make sure they can put the fires out. So this is the ward room. Now, this is where the officers would eat. This is where the low ranking officers would eat. They've got some setups to show you what the tables would look like. And then the high ranking officers, commander and above, would eat in this little room back here that they call the bowling alley. Now, these are the ones that were not part of the admiral staff, but it's kind of cool how they've got that set up. You can see it, you can see the sailor serving. And then they've also got one set up here with the food on the tables and over here uh, some really fine silverware in the back obviously for super special occasions. We've got some kiddos that are enjoying their time in the wardroom pretending they were sailors. Now here's the big industrial kitchen on the back where they would prepare these meals. And going down this hallway Um, here's another serving here. This is the dirty shirt wardroom. So that was the fancy wardroom if you got a lot of time, but if you were an officer and you were in a rush, you could come here, get a buffet style, get self-serve drinks and be on your way quickly, which, you know, when things are going on, sometimes it takes a long time. Uh, back here, we've got the officer's barber shop where they could get their hair cut. And then over here, we've got the hotel office. There'd be a lot of people that would come on the ship, not um, like living on it for long-term duty, but just here for a short period. And they would go to the hotel services office to get assigned their temporary stateroom to pay for meals. Okay, we're going down another deck. So we're now two decks below the hangar deck. This is to the laundry area, and, uh, obviously doing 4,500 people's laundry was a big deal. So they got this big laundry room. It actually, it smells like laundry down here and they've actually got the laundry tumbling around in this big dryer. And they've got these things open up so you could see what it would look like in here to uh, wash some of these things, wash the sailors uniforms. I should also point out if you're tall, the ceilings in here are really quite low. Um, here's where they would press the uniforms to keep them nice and pressed. And you can see there's a lot of presses to press the pants and press the shirts. Okay, when I say it's quite low, I'm six foot tall and I've got to bend down quite a bit when I'm walking through here. All right, and uh, right here, We've got the ship's tailor. So if things need to be fixed, they'd be fixed right back here by the tailor with the tailor's sewing machine. Okay, we're gonna go back up the deck, up this ladder. And uh, I've seen a number of people as I've been walking through here, struggling to get up these stairs because there are a lot of them and they've been walking all day. Here's a sailor cleaning. Obviously, maybe he uh, didn't do something good, so he's got to clean the floor right there. We're just passing the maintenance material management office. Some more doors that are closed or secured, as they would say in the Navy. Just past a mailbox. Here is the command master chief. So this is the senior enlisted person's quarters on board. And this is the uh, showers here where you can see the group showers where they each get their different little stall. Um, and on a Navy ship, they don't call it a restroom, they call it a head. That's what it's called. It's the Navy, Navy shower. And by the way, the sign says the Navy shower, something they take a shower really quick because there's not a lot of water and there are a lot of people on the ship so they can't spend a long time taking a shower if they're living on here. Oh, here you see uh, this is an officer's passageway only. Only officers could go down this hallway. Um, but here we've got uh, the floor being clean. Because you can imagine there's a lot of cleaning that needs to go on a ship of this size. And we, in this video, will just have scratched the surface on this whole thing because the whole thing's not open, just the small part that's the 
Museum. We're back in the eating areas where they cook the food. And then you can see there's some, uh, they removed some of the tables and benches, but there will be some eating areas there. This is the forward mess deck. They've got an exhibit here on uniforms. So if you wonder what the different uniforms are, what the ranks are, well, why some of them have wings, then you can see all about it in that museum area. Okay, I want to show you, no, we're not going to go down the CPO mess, but I do want to show you the <laughs> weapons movement security station. The ordnance crew was trained in handling unconventional weapons, so they had uh, specific things to make sure you didn't bring any of those weapons into this part of the ship with you into the big eating areas. This was the supply depot, so as things had to come in and out of the midway, they'd come in through some of these elevators right here on board the ship. Maybe even some explosives in the box right there. I'm thinking that probably doesn't really go boom anymore. Okay, the engine room is down to the left, which we're not gonna go down, but we are gonna go down to see the sick bay because I think this is pretty cool. Because to take care of 4,500 people, you need to keep them healthy, keep their teeth healthy. And so there's like this whole hospital down here in the medical section. And uh, so we can see in here, there's a couple of bunks uh, that uh, the patients could lie in while they were maybe waiting to be seen. And then here we go. This is the operating room on board the USS Midway. You probably, if you hadn't really thought about aircraft carriers, you probably never thought about, gee, they need big operating rooms and they need doctors. But boy, for so many people, of course, they do. They've got a lab and they've got a pharmacy. So you can see if they need to do more advanced things, they need to look at things. They've got microscopes. They've got all the drugs that they would need. They've got a little office back here for the pill counters back here in the pharmacy to label them. Sick base spaces, by the way, are sponsored by Kaiser Permanente. That's very kind of Kaiser. This video is not sponsored. That was just the sign on by. Here's another uh, medical space operating room. And uh, we here, this is, uh, here we go. We got, a, we got a Navy doctor there. They wear their Navy uniform and they wear their doctor's coat right up on top. And then this takes us to the dental department. All right, this, you could easily hit your head on this. This is about a mm, little, little less than five feet tall. Yeah, so here's the dental office. You can hear the grinding going on back there for the dental laboratory. And here's a dental chair. Yeah, these are, these are some old looking dental chairs. I'm gonna squeeze behind you if I can. Thank you very much. And then this will take us back up to the hangar bay. Well, not quite the hangar bay. This will take us back up to where we eat, and then we'll go one more up back to the hangar bay. <clears throat> okay. It, 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 now I said it's not easy to get lost in here. Uh, this, this area does have a few different loops you can go through, but there are pretty good signs uh, that you can always see to figure out which way the tour continues. And if you just follow those areas, you'll be doing pretty good. This way is the exit to the hangar deck. Just follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. And many of the floors have elevators, so you can take an elevator from the ground up to you can see right there, there's an elevator. You can take an elevator from the ground up to the hangar deck. There's another one from the hangar deck up to the flight deck. There's an elevator from the hangar deck down into here. Now, not all of them will, but many of them do. Okay. And this is the staircase we dropped in to come down here. This one's a little bit of a one way in, one way out, but others of them, like you saw before, are loops. Okay, so here on the hangar deck, some things they have now that they didn't used to have, uh, they have virtual reality simulators. So if you wanna fly a plane, this one is like a two, two people go in this, 
16 bucks and the thing moves around with the screen. Over here, they've got a more virtual reality based one where you wear uh, headsets to do the VR and see that. So there you go, that's what they look like, having a good time. These are some more plain cockpits that you can get into and take pictures here. The Maverick F14 Tomcat. There's also just some seats that you can get in. There's the elevator or the below decks entrance. My favorite plane in the whole place is definitely this yellow plane right here. This one has got my name on it for sure. This one's just a trainer. I also like this room back here. This is just a single room. The S, what does it say? This is the SINS room, the ship's internal navigation system. And this one has a really neat Univac computer in it as a computer geek. It's really neat to see computers of this vintage right here. This big computer stored one gigabyte of data in this Univac. This computer was installed in 1963 before computers were really computers. And you see that you interfaced with it via the teletype, via this thing that really kind of looked like a typewriter back there. And the data was stored on over there, chips, but over here, tapes to load things into it that spun around. For all the younger folks, you know, this was back in the day when you didn't just have USB drives to store everything or, you know, not everybody had the cloud. Oh, there's two elevators um, for planes. This is one elevator for the planes. And there's another elevator for the planes um, over that way. So that's how they would get the planes from this deck up to the upper deck. Now here in the back, there's a theater where you can watch and learn about the history of the Battle of Midway. That's what this aircraft carrier is named after. If you don't know anything about the Battle of Midway, uh, super briefly, it was the decisive battle in World War II that the U.S. defeated the Japanese Imperial Fleet. In that one battle, uh, the U.S. sunk, or the U.S. and the Allies sunk all of the Japanese Imperial Fleet's aircraft carriers. And so you would learn that in the Battle of Midway Theater. And there's one more loop throughout the ship called the forward loop that we're gonna go through. This one has the sailors bunks, the forecastle, the CIC, and the ready room. So let's go up in here. This one actually goes up and then kind of goes down and then to the side and a lot of stair climbing in it. And uh, we'll go up here this way. So through here, we're gonna see all of the different ready rooms uh, for the flight squadrons, how they would get their mission briefings to decide where to go. And uh, I'll definitely as you're walking through here, make sure to pick up your feet as you go through these passageways. They call them knee knockers. You can really kind of scrape yourself if you don't. You can see uh, the pilot's quarters right here. This is the commanding officer for the helicopter squadron. This is the another commanding officer for another squadron. Those you can't go in, uh, but you can go in the actual ready rooms, which are cool. And the first one that we come up on, Traveling Princess really enjoyed sitting in these yellow seats right here. This is where the pilots would get their mission briefing, what they're gonna do, what the different missions are, what pilots gonna do what. And every squadron had their own room to do that in. So here's a ready room for a helicopter group. Little video showing you what the helicopters look like. Here's a little museum about naval aviation, particularly the history of the naval helicopter. This is the carrier air group operation. So this is where they would plan 
what was going to go on for all of the different squadrons in this area. So those were the ready rooms for the squadrons. Here's where they plan the maintenance for all the different aircraft. This guy definitely is probably the most stressed out in there trying to figure out what's working and what's not working. I'll squeeze through here if I may. Thank you. And there's another little museum about how many aircraft were on board. In 1945, there were 133 aircraft on board. Here's a Another museum in what was the Crusaders' ready room. You can see there's lots of wires in the ceiling here, obviously, to make everything work. They've got some maps. You can see a little bit what the whole uh, aircraft carrier looked like. This is where they would store some flight gear. This is actually the, the, the real map. So there's generally like you know, passageways on either side. This It's clearly easy to get lost if you're navigating this, but you're not since you're just on the, the museum track. Yeah, you see it says down here, watch your step as you go over these things so you don't knock your knees. There are a lot of these. Now we're going to go down below deck. This is where the junior officers would stay, 01 and 03. This is the junior officer's bunk room. So if you ever wondered what it looked like to live on board a ship, these bunks right here, somebody would sleep right here on top. And then there's another bunk just down below. We're gonna see some smaller bunks here in a second for not the officers, but the enlisted. Uh, first, we're going to go through some of these planning rooms. Hey, but this is also one of my favorite spots. See, I see this. Definitely looks like one of those movie scenes you've seen. This is where they would work on air warfare. Different than what we saw above for the whole strike group. This is for just the aircraft carrier. So looking at the map of where the aircraft carrier is. Looking at surface operations. So, Charlie Princess loved hanging out here pushing all these buttons too. Oh, and this kind of neat, this is a board where they would put up the status of the aircraft and somebody would stand behind it and write backwards using a grease pen on the glass so that when they're updating the status, they're not blocking the view of the people on the other side of the room. So the Navy would train people to actually write backwards. Can I squeeze by you guys here? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. And this is the forecastle. So this is where the anchors go right here. These are the big chains for the anchors. You can see that. And then the anchors just drop back down right there. And then this staircase. This is probably actually, by the way, this is like one of the most airy parts of the ship because it's sort of open to the outside here. Now, we're not quite going to the anchor deck yet because I said we'd show you the enlisted areas. The junior officer quarters had two to a bunk. Here it is three to a bunk. These are the bunks where the enlisted sailors sleep and the room they get to store their personal items is just what is right under their mattress here. We'll see one of those open in just a second. We can see, oh, they have like mirror here. They could take a look at themselves. Very nice little checkerboard. Uh, here you can see, again, more of those three to a bunk. And uh, this is what it looks like with their storage underneath the bunk. That's where they put their personal item. So not much room to store things. Oh, this knee knocker is really quite tall to go through. So let's go ahead and take a big step over here. But if I squeeze by here, please. Oh, Thanks. Sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is one of the ship's stores. There are four of these little stores, and then there's a big store uh, called a gee dunk. It's what they call it in the Navy, the place where you could buy small items and snacks. 
And then after we pass the ghee dunk, it brings us back out to the hangar deck where we see this large tank to accumulate steam. This aircraft carrier, uh, not nuclear power. Those are the newer ones. So this one runs a little bit more on some of the legacy technology. Well, fellow explorers, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the USS Midway. If you're planning to come to San Diego, you might enjoy my video right here, all about tips for visiting San Diego. And as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in that video.